Hello everybody, welcome to our starter skills show. I was looking at that and I think there's no soft craft stuff on there. We're going to readdress that. I'm going to put some soft crafts in that little a montage imagery that we've got there. But the starter skills today is going to be all about stencils, which is really quite um, one of those things that I always have in my box and I don't actually do anything with them. I don't use them. Um, I forget about them in a way. Um, so I'm really looking forward to having this show and seeing what we can do. Lots of people are messaging in. We've had um, Sarah Brown, um, hello again from everyone from hugs sending hugs from out melbourne australia alicia says good morning and greetings from arkansas got headphones on in store whilst listening to my favorite channel love you guys so much oh thank you very much and thank you for watching or listening or both and um, linda says hi again latoya greetings from michigan i love the intro music so much it puts me in a good mood it absolutely does and i like how festive it is just putting that little kind of jingle bells in there is really good regina says hello everyone from buffalo mary beth hello everyone from a cold minnesota and christy mahoney good morning everybody good morning to everybody there i'm not on my own i've got the lovely michelle with me hello michelle back hello. again back again yeah round two yep um, we're not round two of the game no we're not, not doing more no games, no not round two of the game just round two of me and the fabulous becky exactly so, yeah so starter skills with stencils we've got for you um the show and again i think becky's just said i think lots of us have stencils and aren't quite sure what to do with them so i'm just going to show you um a few of my favorite things uh, a few of my set favorite stencils that we do and just some nice and simple um stenciling techniques to ease you into um your stenciling journey fantastic that sounds great this is the item we're going to show you this is the sara signature garden party delicate doilies and um, so you're going to show us what you can do with this so yes, so I have got um, my delicate doilies from the garden party. This is one of my all time favorite stencils that we do. Uh, obviously you can't see it very well. So let me just bring this in for you. So that is the stencil that we're gonna use. I've just got some of my um, white multi-purpose cardstock and I'm gonna bring in three of my favorite colors. So I have got Lagoon, Lemon Tonic and Fuchsia. These are just my water reactives. Um, absolutely perfect for this kind of technique. So um, in, entirely up to you. You can tape your stencil in place or hold it with your hands. Um, again, that's a personal preference thing, but I'm just gonna tape my two corners down and then we're just gonna, we're just gonna ink them up. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of fuchsia first um, and you can follow the pattern or you can just randomly ink through these if you want to. Again, it's entirely up to you. I'm gonna make sure I'm holding the bottom of this um, stencil because I don't want it to lift up. And I'm gonna, like I always do with my inks, I'm gonna go in gently at first and if I want to build that color up, I'm absolutely going to. So I'm gonna flip this round, just I'm left-handed and I find it easier to do it this way. Um, but if you find it easier or you're struggling, turn your project round. Something just as simple as turning it round to get into um, a particular nook or cranny that you're struggling to get to. So I'm just, again, going to keep going back in and adding uh, to get sort of the depth and the colour that I want. So I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going to go in with my lemon tonic and we're going to come back to this side and we're going to make sure that I overlap because you get the most beautiful third colour when you overlap your lemon tonic with this fuchsia. You get the most beautiful orange going on. And I know we're doing orange, but the orange that you get by layering these two over it's just totally different, absolutely gorgeous. So again, just laying that colour down until I'm happy with what I've got. And then I'm going to bring in uh, my Lagoon. We're just going to go down the middle. And again, I'm going to be very gentle. I'm going to add more if I want to. And then... So again, if you feel like you need to come back in with this, and pop that over there, blend that little bit out that's gone over. You absolutely can. But if I just pop all these to the side and lift this for you, you have got the most beautiful 
rainbow of colours with that gorgeous stencil. Wow, that is looking absolutely beautiful. These are a few of the other samples you can see using these as backgrounds, using them as the main parts of your card as well. They look absolutely beautiful. These ones upside down, um, but you can see all of those different designs you can make with these. These are using Sara Signature Garden Party. These are the delicate doilies. Now that makes a real difference showing you how to use stencils because it is something that I hardly ever use. Um, like I say, I put them at the bottom of the box. Um, I never touch them because I'm always a little bit scared about what to do with them. I'm yeah. never too sure what to do with them. Um, and, and I was exactly the same. And I think for me, embossing folders and stencils, they were something that I was definitely a bit scared of. Um, but you know, we've done some em embossing folder um, starter skills and I thought we need to do the same with stencils. Um, and again, it's a little bit of a dabble into mixed media. So just by adding ink, I've dabbled into mixed media. So straight away, I feel a little bit more like, oh, I'm not just a card maker. I can do mixed media as well. <laughs> Is that really daft? But um, it's, I mean, you saw it. It's so quick and easy to do. Um, it absolutely just, I love it. It looks fantastic. And what you can also do is you can emboss. So if I put, in fact, shall I have a go? Have I got my rubber embossing mat? Oh, I have. Not? So you can, embo so you you can, can emboss with any stencil? You can emboss with any stencil. So let me pop this back over here. And so, would you stencil through first or emboss first? Um, well, normally I would emboss first, but again, I don't think it really makes a difference because mm -hmm. um, you're going to get that beautiful emboss anyway. So let me just tape this back into place because if it's going to move, you're not going to get the emboss on that lovely detail. So, if you want to emboss one of your stencils, so I'm going to pop that on there, I'm going to pop my card and my stencil on, I'm going to pop this over the top, um, and then I'm going to go in with my plastic, I'm going to leave my magnetic out. Okay. Um, normally when you put um, a particular shim in, you will take one out. Um, so just going to run that through so I don't have my metal and I don't have my magnetic in there um, but the, the rubber one so that purple one is the one that you're going to need if you want to add if you've got dyes and you want to have that um, that really embossed detail that your dyes can give you you know if you've got like florally dyes then that's what you're going to pop in you're going to pop in your rubber mat so let me just move those. I do love those colours you've used in that. And if I bring that out, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I have done. I put it on the wrong way, didn't I? So, so that's a lesson in what not to do. Now we'll show you what <laughs> to do. Did I put it underneath or on top? I need to put it on top, don't I? So I need to pop that on top. I'm going to pop that back through. Uh, and again, you know, if, if you've run it through and you've put your rubber embossing uh, mat in the wrong place, just pop it back through again. Um, it's not doing any harm or damage to your embossing or your piece of card or even the inking on there. Mm -hmm. It might just be that I need to add back in. Let me pull that up again. I do. So because it's a stencil and not necessarily a die, I'm going to pop that back in, I'm going to pop that over and I am going to add my magnetic in Okay. because it's not necessarily a die so that tiny little bit of extra depth, third time lucky, yeah. that little bit of extra depth with that rubber embossing mat doesn't really make no difference but you can hear it it's, um, it's saying to me that might be just a little bit too thick Michelle but it's gone through perfectly if it doesn't like it, it's not going to go through. It's going to stop. It's going to pop it back out. Um, so you don't need to worry about that. But you can see it, it tends to drag it out a little bit is what you will find. There we go. So I'll just take that off. See, what I've got an emboss on there. You can't see it now because what's happened is because my ink wasn't so dry, um, it smudged it all. But I have got a, uh, I've got an emboss on there, and again, you can't see it, but yeah, pop your rubber mat in, mm -hmm. and you're going to get that emboss there, and then you can ink it as well. So Fantastic. Yeah. That looks really good. I like that idea. But I, I'm, I'm so smudged that you can't see it, unfortunately. No, we can't see it at all. 
No, it, but it's it very looks, grungy it looks now. Good. I like that. <laughs> very grungy now. <laughs> um, people messaging in. Um, so Deborah says, I'm a lefty as well, and I use the same technique about rotating. Oh, I think we forget, don't we, to move things yeah, around. You, Sometimes you, you're like you, this, and you, you know you don't need to be, no. uh, especially if you've got one of those rotating um, clipboards yes. to work on. Yeah. Charlotte Everett says, Afternoon, everyone. Watching while taking a break from decorating for Christmas. I'm so excited about Christmas coming up, and I can't wait to get decorating at home. It's very Christmassy here at the moment um charlotte also said i didn't realize you can emboss any stencil neither did i and i you know i think i'm going to be going home and picking all those stencils out and actually using them now and um, latoya says stenciling is a great way to add a tad of depth to a card just a few seconds and you're done it's the best part of crafting experimenting and having fun i love that trio of colors they were stunning um, Charlotte says, so is it just rubber embossing mat in a clear top plate? I think we added the metal shim and the magnetic shim in there in order yes. to try it. You can try an error, see you know, what your machine yeah. is. Perhaps you don't have our machine and you have another one and obviously you'd have to sort of work out and see what works for you. Yeah, and definitely. Sarah says, sorry, Sarah says, what GSM or card or paper is best when you emboss a stencil? Um, so I'll give you 300 GSM. It's a nice thick um, GSM and you're going to get a lovely emboss on it. It will emboss with a thinner card, but you might have to add an extra um, shim of card in there um, for that extra depth. But yeah, that's the 300 that I used. Fab. This is your beautiful butterfly stencil. This is your seven by seven stencil. And we are going to see from Michelle um, what we can do with this. So I have got, again, I've got my lovely winter sparkle um, glitter paste. So we're going to pop this back out again. I'm going to bring in a piece of watercolour card. And we're going to pop this on. So again, because this glitter paste has got quite a lot of uh, water content, um, I've definitely switched up to my watercolour card. It's going to give me um, a better um, overall effect. So I was saying earlier, when you're doing this, you can use a spare piece of card or anything like that. I've just gone and got from my uh, bag, just one of my old um, store loyalty cards that I don't really use. Um, so we're gonna use that one. So again, let's bring in a little bit of tape and we'll just, in fact, to tell you what, we're not gonna tape it down. I'll show you what we're gonna do. So we're gonna get the glitter paste and we're gonna create a lovely background. So I'm gonna scoop up a little bit of this and we're gonna, you can see I've got a little bit more control with the thicker plastic card than I have with a piece of card. So I'm gonna gently lift that up. Oh, and I've got, it looks lovely. So again, so let's, let's pop this on here. And again, let's pick up some of this glitter paste and we're gonna go all the way down. Now, I'm not bothered that I've gone over the edge a little bit. If you are, use some masking tape or um, you know, just another piece of card just to butt up to there so it doesn't go over. So let hold that there and I'm gonna peel it up. So let's pop this here. So again, let's take a bit of this um, texture paste. And this is great for just creating a background that you are gonna have a focal effect, something over the front. So just randomly placing it all over my piece of card. Um, you can create some lovely backgrounds. So just scrape that back into there and then just scoop it back up and pop that bit there. And then I think one last one is going to go up the top here. So doing it this way, you always need to be mindful of everything else, either needing to dry or not placing your stencil back over it. So let's pop that last little bit over there. And then there you go. I've created myself um, a beautiful background with that stencil. Fabulous. These are some of the examples of the different things you can do here with using these as a beautiful kind of background. Um, really, really stunning cards, as always, using them at the same sort of tonal colours on here as well, and even using them with your embossing folders as well. So this is your beautiful butterfly stencil. I 
think that looks really beautiful. Using that glitter paste is a great item to do, isn't it? It and really I do, is. I know you do love that blue glitter paste. Can you tell? Yeah. Uh, whoever got you in Secret Santa, that's what they should be getting you, shouldn't they? <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, and again, I love it because you get such a different effect on your on your crafts, whatever project you are using. Um, you get, you get such a different effect. You've got that beautiful raised. So this is a glitter paste. So you've got that beautiful raised effect. You've also got that gorgeous um, glitter coming through. And once it's dried, you've got a real nice tactile project. Mm -hmm. So if you're gifting this to someone straight away, they're going to they're gonna want to touch it and they're going to be like, wow, I can't believe you made this. So and, and, and do you know what? And it's just a lot of fun to play with, to have a... Uh, with your stencils, if you've got stencils, you definitely need some sort of a, a glitter paste or a texture paste. Um, you're going to be addicted, definitely, because, you know, it's <laughs> anything that you have got to do with card crafting, you're going to yeah. get addicted to because it's How just a lot of fun. How long does it take fun. to dry? Um, so this will probably be touched dry within an hour, okay. um, but give it a good couple of hours before you go back to it, definitely. And you were saying better to use it on watercolour paper so it stops it that from burning? Yes, yeah, because this paper. one's got, um, it's got a, a good water content in it. Um, so I used it earlier on my normal card mm -hmm. and it warped it a little bit. Yeah. Um, but again, I did put a lot more on. So, and again, I think it depends on what tool you're using to um, apply it with. So again, I used my old loyalty card, which is a nice thick plastic, but you can get specific tools for actually doing that. I can't remember what they're called. Um, it's just like a little palette knife or a yeah. spatula, something like that. Um, if you're using a, a piece of old card, you're not going to get the same control uh, as you are with this. So again, um, I've managed to have less on this watercolour card, so it means just less water on there, so less warping. And you wouldn't use something like a stippling brush, you know, like a brush that's really sort of um, really condensed and short. So it's like, um, you know, like when back in the 80s, 90s, when everyone yeah. was stenciling on walls, they were using those kind of stippling brushes. You wouldn't use something like that with that glitter paste? Um, I, I would imagine that you could, because I know exactly what you yeah. mean. You're going to get a totally different effect with that. But again, it's one of them things where I'll say, if you've got a stippling brush in this, have a play, see what it turns out. It might turn out fabulous. It might not, but then at least, you know. Fantastic, that's great. Um, D Thomas says, a newbie here, love this. Hello, and I hope you really, anyone that's new, message in, say hello. We, no, we like to hear from you people, and we're always getting new people watching. Um, so you can see down at the bottom all of those different ways you can get in touch. You can send us a message, you can ask us a question. It might be a question about Christmas, it might be a question about Christmas songs, or it might be a question actually related to what we're doing here today. Um, we don't mind. We're, we're not fussy about the questions. We quite like any kind of question that you send through to us. Um, Charlotte Everett said, I can't remember who said it now, but they also made mentioned it's great for visually impaired people to have texture that's a great idea yes and for kids as well you know being able to touch a card and feel something different yeah yeah definitely mm. um I, I, re I remember exactly um what show you mean that someone actually mentioned about it being tactile so yes and this one it, oh, it's perfect for that so you could absolutely be doing that for um kids as well because kids love to they have to touch everything kids i mean i mean so do we, to be fair. We have yeah. to have a... If you're in a shop and you see something, you can't help it, can you? No. So, no. yeah, definitely for that tactile feel. Yeah, no, love that it. doesn't it didn't make sense. I like to stroke fabric. Yeah. Yeah, as you, you, know, you saw yesterday, I was just stroking the fabric <laughs> yes. all, all, all day long. Um, <laughs> as it is Christmas, we do have the 12 Days of Craftmas. So do remember um, to look at the website because we do have double points on everything today. And it's a different um, deal or a different freebie that we give you every day. So just have a look on the website for that information. This is the Wisteria Whisper. This is your embossing folder and stencil. And we're going to see how to use this for Michelle. So this is one of our embossing folders and stencils. So you can see I've got the uh, lovely embossing folder. It's a nice four by six one. And then if I just move that to the side, you can see I've got my three stencils there. Now I've numbered mine already. Um, and what I also do, which Craig gave me a great idea, when you've got one of these embossing folders and there's lots of stencils in, um, I cut my top left-hand corner so I know exactly how I'm going to pop it on um, to my card. So I know that I'm getting the right order and the right way. 
So I've already run my embossing um, folder through and now you can't see it. Um, so this is what I love. This is almost a reveal. I love this bit. So I've brought in my first stencil. So I'm just going to lay it over and I'm just going to adjust it until I know it's over the um, embossed area and the bit that I'm going to ink. So I'm just going to bring in some tape because I'm going to tape this down. Um, that piece of tape's not playing, let's try again. So let's just tape this down just to the side there. And I'm going to bring in, I've got some of my opaques. So I've got my crushed velvet, my grasshopper and my pale fig. And again, you're going to get a totally different effect and a totally different feel um, using your opaques. So this first one that I'm going to be using, I'm going to use my grasshopper because this is all, all the foliage on there. So again, I'm going to, I'm going to um, dab away. I'm not going to do um, a twisting or a turning um, motion because I don't want to get my ink underneath some of those delicate edges of that stencil. So let's take that off. So that's number one. Let's bring in number two. So this is going to go down here. So let's pop that on there. And again, let's stipple all over there. This one is a little bit um, more secure. So I can do that um, different motion on there because there's no little edges that I might accidentally lift up. So that's number two. And then if I bring in number three with my pale fig, let's just line that up on there. And again, I can just do that lovely motion. And there you go. You have got that beautiful wisteria stenciled gorgeous demonstration and you can see these beautiful cards this is a really stunning one all these different designs that you can make with that really intricate different stencil you've got here so this is your wisteria whisper emboss folder and stencil i love that it is so pretty it is beautiful it, it really really is isn't it um I love this one. I just, it's so beautiful. But what I want to do is let me bring, if I bring this, this one back in and pop it back over. Um, and if I bring my crushed velvet back in, what I want to do is I want to give it that ombre mm -hmm. sort of feel. So if I go back up to the tops and really go in with a lot more ink, just up that top and then sort of blend it out just going to keep adding and you can heat emboss these this is going to stay open um, for long enough so you can see that I've got that natural ombre effect going on I can do the same with the pale fig so if I bring this one back in and just pop that over there so it's very easy to find I mean one because of the emboss um, but two it's um, it's just quite easy on these ones to, to see exactly where it needs to pop on. So I'm feeling, if I'm going to bring this in, so I've just got a little bit of ink that's still left on from the crushed velvet. Okay. So I'm just going to pop that over the top. And you're just dabbing, you're not doing no, a circle with these ones? I'm not, I'm just dabbing on this one. So if I lift that up, can you see that It's effect? so pretty. And I missed that whole Wisteria collection because it was here for like, three minutes and gone it was yeah, it? yeah it was here and it was gone definitely um oh, it is such i think we was talking about it yesterday as well weren't mm. we it is such a beautiful collection so those of you who've got it so lucky you're going to know exactly um what i'm talking about yeah yeah I th in fact i think there is some available yeah. i don't think there's like the full bundle um 
But if you're thinking, I know this is in stock because um, because I've used it, so I'm, I checked to make sure. Mm. So this folder is definitely in stock if this is the only bit that you want from this collection. But if you're going to go have a look, mm. you're definitely going to pick, you are, you're going to pick lots more than what just this one thing, definitely. Because didn't you pick a picture or take a picture of um, an, a place near you that has all this wisteria hanging I did. I yeah. yeah, I posted it on my um, Facebook and my Instagram. Um, there's this bistro and it's got wisteria growing all over it and it's over 200 years old wow and it is the most spectacular um yeah site it really i would hate to be the one having to sweep all you know those <laughs> flowers and leaves up but while it's in bloom it looks stunning it really does so, um, we're just hearing 17 pieces still available for that wisteria collection so it's definitely worth if you're, you're keen on that having a look um i really like wisteria and i always wanted to i always thought i'd have a house with wisteria um hanging from the front of it but then i married a charter surveyor and um, he was like you don't have any trees within five meters of your property um because you know it just looks at the cracks and everything else and um, so it's quite damaging but i mean goodness yes. it just looks absolutely stunning really, it really beautiful. does yeah i'm learning so much with these stencils because like i said it's something that i don't I literally when you get collections and i have a stencil in it they just go to one side because i would never really know what i'm trying to achieve out of them we think about sort of layering things up but i never really think about what i could do with the stencil so it's making a big difference to me to be you know inspired to use something else yeah definitely i mean like so the wisteria that i've just used it's got its own embossing folder with it um, so absolutely, you can be using that as a focal point, but these do make beautiful backgrounds. So if you just want to start there making fabulous backgrounds for your cards, you're going to build your confidence up yourself and then you're going to think, well, I can do this with it or I can go on and do that with it. But uh, so I think starting at the beginning, I know it sounds daft, but mm. um, yeah, that's where we're starting today. Brilliant. Um, we've had a few messages coming in. Charlotte says, um, I love this. It's so, so beautiful. I adore everything in Wisteria. I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, Suzanne says it's so pretty. Um, we've had a question come in from Jenny. Um, she wants to know how you clean your daubers. Um, I don't. You don't. <laughs> okay. That's an easy question. <laughs> I, I like keep those ones coming. Yeah. Um, but no, I don't. I, what I tend to do is I will have a set for my opaque inks mm -hmm. and I think there's roughly enough in there to cover all the opaques that I've got. And then um, I have another set that I use with my um, water reactives. I don't have them for my quick dries because that's not the kind of um, thing that I do with my quick dries. You don't do that kind of blending and stuff. Um, so I have two different sets. Um, I, I know some people label them, so each little dauber in there, some people have put little labels on. Or on the outside of your box, so just bringing mine in, on the outside of your box, either on the top or on the bottom, just put a little sticky note and write on it which each one is. So you'd have your pale fig, your crushed velvet, your fuchsia, um, so on and so forth. Um, but I think sometimes you sort of get to a point where you can open that up and think, right, I know what that one is, um, and pick it up. If you don't have daubers, what could you use instead? Um, so if you haven't got any of those daubers, then um, these I also have. But um, if I am stenciling, if I'm inking or anything like that, and I know I've got small areas, that is why I'll use my daubers. But um, if I've got a bigger area, I just use my, um, I can never remember what these are called. Now you put me on the spot because I can, blenders. Yes, ink blenders. blenders. Yeah. Honest to goodness, I need to have that tattooed on my eyeball uh, so I can see but it, it all the work. time. You need to have the tattooed on your eyelid. Yes. So you have to see them on your eyeball. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> see, look, I'm not even going to tattoo it in the right place. Still not going to know what it is. But, but I would. So but that yes. works with one of us, wouldn't it? Yeah. And, yeah. and do you use the circular ones or do you use the um, rectangular ones? What's the best one? I, I use the circular ones. I don't get on with the rectangle mm -hmm. ones. They're just, they're a little bit too big for me because I'm quite clumsy. Um, <laughs> as some of you love those. And I think it's another personal preference yeah. thing. I love my circle ones. Some get on better with the square oblong ones. So, but um, I think, again, it's entirely a personal choice. I find with those oblong ones, because you've got a sharp edge, you end up having a sharp edge when you're blending. Yes. Um, whereas, you know, it's almost like a, it's almost like, you know, Karate Kid with your wax on, wax off kind of thing. This yeah. is like a normal kind of m movement. It, it's a little bit harder with ones with a straight and flat edge. Yeah. Um, like those yeah. ones. So I, I'm with you on that. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, and I know some of, I, I know Sarah uses the oblong ones, yeah. rectangle. 
oblong, oh, rectangle, no. um, but no, personal preference. Same thing, isn't it? Tomato, yeah. tomato. It is, absolutely. <laughs> um, I do hope that um, everyone's been watching um, Sarah's, or going to try and see Sarah's shows. Um, so if you are in the UK, she's been doing a tour. Um, I went to see her last week. I took my husband to see it. Um, and we sat front row, which was very embarrassing to be right in the front row. And Sarah's right there and Ben's right there. But you can absolutely, if you the store's tickets available for some of the shows, I think. So if you're keen to go, it was well worth it. A little glass of wine and there's not normally ice cream in the interval, which I think is always a definite bonus um, to have th those kinds of things um, on your show. Um, we've got lots of people messaging in still. Um, do message in if you are an, a new person that have never watched the show before, um, if you've never um, watched our shows, you don't know what they're all about. We're trying to give you some starter skills in these shows at the weekend um, to sort of introduce you to different things. I mean, I, I'm... I've been crafting for years, but I'm obviously learning um, more and more bits and pieces um, from these as well. So really useful for me. Um, and do message in if you've got any questions while we're here um, to let you know, so we can find out what the kind of things that you're interested in finding out about as well. Um, we're going to get going with a few more demonstrations, aren't we? Um, I'm just going to grab my box of tricks, which is underneath my desk. So we are... We're going to look at the mystical damask or damask. This is from your Enchanted Dreams stencil and Michelle's going to show us how to use it. Again, another beautiful stencil that is going to create an absolutely beautiful background. So it's a lovely five by five in size. Um, you can be using it with your different inks onto your different card stocks. And I think for this, I mean, that is the right way up. But again, you know, you can pop it on the other way if you want. It's entirely up to you. So again, I'm, I'm going to put it onto a full piece of card, but you could cut down um, and then ink up or ink up and then cut down again. Um, it depends how you work and how you prefer to work. Um, so there we go. So we've got that uh, nice and secure on my card and it's just my... Uh, water, it's not my watercolour card, it's my multi-purpose card, sorry, so just our white. Um, tropical blue and starlit sky, so these are our new shimmer pearlescent pigments. They're, they're a hybrid almost, you're going to be able to do um, your opaque pigment ink um, things with it, so the heat embossing, but you're also going to be able to use them like one of your water reactives okay. and um, do those kind of effects as well. So again, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some ink with my um, dauber and I'm just going to dab. And it, it's very sticky, as you can see, because okay. every time I, I dab onto it, it sticks, it lifts it up. So you can see that it's a nice sticky ink. So if I want to go back in and heat emboss this afterwards, I'm going to be able to because it's going to stay sticky. It's going oh, to stay open know. for quite a while. So we're going to pop that across there and I'm going to come in with the starlit sky. And again, I'm doing this motion because there's lots of little edges of that stencil under there that I don't want to um, bend or lift up. Mm -hmm. And what you can do is you can always go back in um, and add. Even if you've taken your stencil away, you can go back in uh, and add more just you know you're just going to be able to place it over nice and simply because you've inked through it once already so you're going to be able to um, find it easily enough so let's just do this last bottom bit so last little bit and if I lift that You've got oh, a lovely beautiful. distressed um, image there. That is stunning. This is another example of what you can do. So this is the one with um, your little unicorn here. So this is your mystical damask. Um, this is your five by five stencil.
Gorgeous. I love the idea that they're sticky and you can use them for putting some of the heat bossing in, in powder on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you could see every time I put my darber in, it lifted it up. So just, just that in itself, I, you can, it, it's testament to how sticky that these are. But um, so that's give me that lovely um, distressed uh, look by not going in too much. But if I pop this back on, so for one, you can see that I just need to find, find my place. And let me tape that back down. And then I'll show you if you just, obviously, the more ink you add, how different it's going to look. Because you're using stencils, great wrapping paper. You're going to oh. use some brown wrapping paper, plain wrapping paper. Yes. And then sort of stencil your patterns on there, couldn't you? You absolutely could. Stencils are absolutely perfect for that. Because the thing is, you can lift this up and you can carry that pattern on. Um, obviously, if you're using these opaques, you're going to make sure that it's dry before you try and sort of move it about. But um, yeah, perfect for things like that. So let's just add lots They're more. They're very vivid colours as well, aren't they? In this, <gasps> these um, little ink pads. They really and are. And they're ergonomically correct, I think I'm remembering, that you can hold them in your hand and they're very easy to use. Yeah, yeah. So the way that you can hold them, definitely. Mm. Um, it just sits lovely in your palm. But um, I know these went, uh, what, within hours of Leanne launching them? <laughs> and, then, and then I think they brought a smaller bundle back and then an even smaller bundle and an even smaller <laughs> bundle. So well done if you managed to get your hands on yes. them. Yes. Yeah. I, I, so even I didn't manage to get the full bundle. I got the, the, second, the second version, the 2.0 version. So even I don't have them all. But um, as soon as they come back into stock, I definitely will. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I, um, I missed the, um, when they came out. And by the time, I think it was probably only like the second show. And then I was like, right, I must order those. And then they've gone. Yes, yeah went so quickly but I can see why because as mm. soon as I got mine and I started having a play with them and the fact that the the, the hybrid mm. so they are gonna act like you can see how sticky they are that the opaque the pigment but you can also do the water effects because obviously they're water-based still so if I just lift that up now just by going back over you can see that I've got a lot more of a solid um, colour lay down, so solid image on that. Um, but and it's just from doing that sort of stippling effect that you can have that really light contrast compared to, again, <coughs> just going in and adding lots more ink. But um, stenciling is absolutely one of my favourite things to do, I've got to say. And does that take a little bit longer to dry, that one, because it's um, a little bit sticky? Yes, so your opaque will take a, um, longer to dry. So you can either fast dry it with your... Um, embossing you know your heat embossing hair dryer thing in my bob um what are they <laughs> called <laughs> hair drying thing me bob yes yeah, so your heat to, it's just a heat tool how can i forget such simple <laughs> words so yes you can fast heat fast dry it with your heat tool or you can just wait for it to dry but um if you're popping your um embossing powder on there and using your heat tool then you know it's gonna uh, dry it anyway so um but yeah so, no, so my uh, producer's just asked me a question. He says, will it crinkle the, the paper more? And no, it absolutely doesn't. Um, I think because it's a nice, thick, solid card, I think you might get some thinner cards. So if you've got a thinner GSM mm -hmm. and you're heating it, it might warp it a little bit. If you find you've done that and it's warped a little bit, just pop it underneath a heavy book or something and it'll, as it dries, it'll flatten it out, so... Uh, there's always a way around I think most things can you use that on um, vellum yes so you can use this on vellum it's going to take forever to dry if you leave it <laughs> if it does at all because vellum just doesn't soak in um, due to the nature of the, the way it's made but you are going to heat emboss you're going to use these to stamp onto your vellum and use your powder and heat emboss heat set these looks amazing on vellum fantastic this 
Um, we've, we've got lots of people messaging in about all those sort of comments, lots of sim similar comments about cleaning daubers. So we've already sort of covered those. Um, I'd like to know what your favourite stencil is, actually. Do you have a stencil that you use um, that you think, actually, this is like my favourite, this is my go-to, this is one I always use? Or do you, you know, like me, have them languishing at the bottom of the box, um, never, never to be used, apart from now we've done this actual show and then you're going to start getting those um, all out. So do message in. If you've got any questions, for Michelle while she's here about stencils about anything really um, do message in um, if, especially if you're new and you're watching the show and you're thinking well I don't know what a dauber is what, what's that you know what no what you're talking about mats and layers what you're talking about you no know, embossing I don't understand what you're talking about message in and we'll, we'll set you straight we'll give you all that information We have the Yuletide bauble stencil here. We're going to see from Michelle how to use this beautiful stencil. Right, so with this Yuletide bauble, we have a few of these in the collection, but this, uh, this one is my favourite. I just absolutely love it. But in this collection, not only do you get this big stencil, you get lots of little bits. So you've got lots of elements to be creating um, lots of different effects in your barbell itself even down to some little clouds that I've got there on my hand so again what we're going to do is I've picked some of my inks I've got my midnight I've got my oasis I've got my smoked emerald and I've got my baby blue and again I'm going to use my darbers so I'm going to come in with my baby blue first and I'm going to pick it a little bit up I'm just going to tap it off there just to make sure that I don't have too much on there and then I'm going to ink inside my bauble and I'm laying just the tiniest little bit down. I'm going to bring this in. It's going to create me a lovely little um, hill. I'm going to ink over that with a little bit more ink. And then if I move that, you can see I've got that lovely snowy oh, yeah. hill. And then, so what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, ink up the rest. So I'm going to do my bow in a lovely midnight blue and again either using a little bit of your masking tape to mask away so I don't go where I don't want to in that barbell. So I've got my blue, I'm going to bring some more midnight blue on this ribbon round the edges. A little bit there. I think, uh, so I'm going to use my smoked emerald. It's one of my favourite combinations, this smoked emerald and this blue. So That's a beautiful colour. Yeah, oh I love it. Absolutely love it. So let's just get it all laid down. And I can be a little bit, not less careful with this one, but I don't have lots of little edges that I need to worry about um, lifting. So I can do more of that lovely swirly technique it could be a little bit firmer as well now I definitely would and should have just laid a little bit more of this all round just to make sure that I didn't go in those um, little bits that I didn't want to but if I just lift that up for you now and show you that beautiful uh, Yule Tide bauble absolutely beautiful here are some further samples these ones have been fussy cut out which look amazing oh that one down here you can see what that looks like um, using them as centerpieces for your cards so these are your yuletide bauble stencils I love the fact they have actually cut these out, fussy cut them out. We were talking about this earlier. These, I mean, if I hold this up again so you can actually see how intricate this fussy cutting is, but that looks really, really clever. I do like that. Um, it really makes a sort of centerpiece for your card. Um, I couldn't do fussy cutting this, this well. No. What's the, what's the technique? What's the trick? Um, the trick is don't be me because I'm rubbish at it. No, um, <laughs> with the fussy cutting, they always say move the card rather than the scissors. Um, some people are a whiz with a craft knife. So we've got a couple of craft knives. We've got our normal one and we've got one with, um, it's got a different end on it. So it allows you to do those Well, like swirls. a curved blade? Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you can get lots of different 
um, crafts by. Do you know what? Years ago now, we're talking maybe about 10 years ago, um, I don't know if it's still as big now, because you don't see it as much, but I saw this one woman near where I lived, and she had these, um, the most intricate designs, words, whatever you can think of, and she just used to cut them out with a craft knife. And I'm pretty sure it's probably got a name. Mm. Um, but she, so you could, you know, you could message her and say, can you have all my family's names in like a tree? Or, and yeah. it was the most decorative, decadent thing you've ever seen. But she used to cut it all out with a craft knife. Wow. Now that must have taken her, it would have taken me months, but it must have taken her days to do it. But, um, so I know there's loads of people out there who would have whizzed with a craft, a craft knife or mm. a craft blade. Me, not so much, um, which is why I love die cutting. Mm -hmm. Because you, um, for the most part, everything like that you get with die cutting. Um, I will attempt fussy cutting when Craig's not watching me. Because <laughs> he's so good. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I think it's the same with everything. You know, it's a little bit of, of practice yeah. with um, that. But yeah. The, the e so 10 minutes later, yes, just practice and it's moving the card, I think, rather than the scissors. And using bigger scissors or smaller scissors? Well, again, you know, you've Use seen... the little you've, snips that we have. <laughs> you've seen my scissors, You're, so... Yeah, I mean, they're, they're like proper dressmaking scissors, aren't they? These are proper dressmaking yeah. scissors, yeah. yeah. So these are my favourite ones. I love these. So these are our Sarah signature ones. They're our rose gold ones. I'm pretty sure the last time I checked, they were still on our website. Most people will use these for fussy cutting. But um, again, it's what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I'm more comfortable um, with a big blade. And the reason that I'm more comfortable with a big blade is because I start obviously there. And as I'm turning, as you know, I start with my card right there. So if I pick it up and just quickly show you. So I start with it there. So if I cut in, I start with it there and I will go all the way around and I will use it right to the edge of my blade. So oh, okay. I've got all that cut in one. If I come in with my snips to do it, I am having to do it a lot more, if you see what I mean. Okay. Right. So that's why I tend to use a big yeah. pair of scissors. Yeah. And, and again, um, it's a personal preference thing, but if you do use your snips, have a go with our big pair of scissors. Um, see how it feels for you. You might find, actually, Michelle's not as mad as she looks. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's going to be buying those really enormous scissors, you know, ones that people use for cutting the ribbon. Yes. You'd, you'd, you'd get the whole Can you, thing. You would get the whole up. thing, absolutely. I don't, I don't think they're massively sharp, those um, great big comedy um, scissors that you get. Um, but that's a really useful thing to, to think about. And actually, I totally forgot about craft knives. I yeah. was just thinking about using scissors. Yeah. But I suppose it's like anything, once you practice a few times and you get used to doing yeah. it, you'll be able to um, use it quite easily. Um, yeah. The swivel craft knife is currently in stock. So if you did want to give that a whirl, you can do. Um, I always find I want to put something on my finger because when I'm using the craft knife, you press down hard on that finger. You almost want a little, um, I use like those silicon um, tips just to protect that finger so to stop yeah. it from getting not injured but just sore because of all that pressure that you've got down there well, um, yeah, yeah yeah of course I, the thing is I suppose it's the same with scissors when you're cutting a lot sometimes whichever um, whichever finger that you've got constantly touching anything mm. that you're using it can uh, get sore but yeah definitely with the, the pressure of a craft knife using a little um, silicon finger definitely yeah. wouldn't hurt, would it? No, it would make a lot of difference. Yeah. Um, Coletta says, the Bauble and Globe collection just arrived last night. So that is a perfect timing for you. Um, you've been able to see what we've been doing with that. Um, Anne Fleming says, um, if I want to stencil on fabric, what ink would you recommend? Now, I've never used any of our inks to stencil on fabrics. Have you had a go on that? Um, so, you could use some of our inks, um, I would imagine our opaques will go, I, I've got plenty of tops that have got ink all over them, definitely, <laughs> um, I don't think you're going to be able to wash them and set them, I think yeah. once you wash them, they're going to come off anyway, so I don't think we do a particular ink yet, maybe, you know, we'll let Leanne know, see what she says, but I don't think mm. we do an ink that, um, you know, you can sort of set and then wash, I'll tell you what, and in the break, um, I will get um, a stencil and I'll get some ink and I've got 
I've got loads of fabric <laughs> and just outside the door. I'll, I'll see what works in, in that doesn't, you know, doesn't bleed um, into fabric. We yeah. obviously won't be able to check about washing, but you know, that can give you an idea if you're going to be making a, an, an item for the kids or something like that. You just need a quick yeah. um, bit of, bit of stenciling on it and that, or even yes. using it as a, a temporary thing to then embroider over the top of would be nice. Or if if we do i mean becky will do that so but the thing is you can get like um uh is it mod podge where you yes. can seal so i know you can seal like um you know your rocks or you know mount bar things like that i wouldn't i'm pretty sure there's a fabric one where you can fabric seal yeah you can get like a scotch guarding yeah. kind of thing you so, just have to try it out on a few I different would, yeah. pieces of fabric and see what works um leanne is a person to know but we'll, we'll give it i'll give it a try in the break and i'll i'll pop it on my social media and then we'll ask leanne and we'll see if we can find out if there's anything else that you um you can do there um so has a anybody got any messages we've got a few people coming you know messaging in at the moment um while michelle is here because michelle is the you no know, fans of all knowledge I um, I've never been called many things. <laughs> never been called that. <laughs> I, th I think, you know, I've learned a lot from you since I've been working with you, which is, what, a year? Just over a year yeah, we've been working yeah, together. Um, yeah. You know, some actually, you know, every time we're here with somebody else, you, you learn something. Uh, yes, don't definitely. You? you know, that's the opportunity that we have to have yeah. a chat with someone and find out little bits of news and gossip. And actually, Michelle helped me a lot during um, yesterday um, when I was doing some paper craft. <laughs> Um, which I don't often do. Um, <laughs> that was the funniest thing ever. You were like, it's not stamping. It's like I, there's no ink on it. There's no stamp there. That's why it's not stamping. <laughs> yeah, I did have a little, little, bit of a, little bit of a nightmare there. Um, Robin says, do you have any tips for keeping the ink separate in small areas? Everything I try, everything I try to stencil, my colours mixed up together in the bow area of yes. that stencil. Absolutely. So you need our masking tape. So it's like a huge roll of um, very, very low tack. It's almost the same as a, a post-it note. Okay. So I've just stuck mine back down. So I've got my bow area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear off little pieces um, and I'm just going to line this bow. So we're just going to, again, you're just going to tear off little pieces and they're going to stick perfectly. So let me just... So you wouldn't want to use your normal low-tack tape for this? No. No. I, I mean, you've seen, I'm, as soon as I've stuck mine down, it's sort of, it's moving my um, um, top layer of my card as soon as I uh, remove it. So what you're going to do is you are just going to keep tearing off little bits and you're going to line it up and you're going to cover all the bits that you don't want to go over. And then you're just going to bring your ink pads in. I definitely use your daubers because you've got more control. If you've got a really small area like this, so if I want to colour all that round it green mm -hmm. and I just want to colour that little bit red, um, then get a cotton bud. Okay. You know, like an earbud, a cotton bud. Yeah. And just, you know, dab that tiny little bit there with, um, you know, your cotton bud and your ink. But now I've got that down there. And again, you're going to be careful not to sort of ink that way and lift it up. But if I just finish inking round there and then let's lift this up. And then if I just remove those, try not to get the ink that's now on my fingers because I'm a mucky pup. Just remove those. You can see that okay. I've got no ink anywhere. So. And this is going to last just so, so long. You're going to be able to put it down and remove it, put it down and remove it a, a dozen times before you lose the stick. So you think, what is, is the 10 metres on this? I don't know. I've not actually seen that before. I've seen it um, advertised, but I've not seen how wide that roll is. It's really wide. Yes, yeah, so it's six inches wide, and I'm pretty sure there's at least 10 metres on here. So this is going to last you forever. Um, because you saw all these tiny little pieces that I ripped off and you can see how it has covered it perfectly um, and I've got no overspill with that ink that I've just used on there. Mm. So that definitely. That's a big difference. That's really useful to have. Um, we've had, uh, Michelle says, the um, not you, Michelle, another Michelle, Michelle Persons. <laughs> um, the ombre ink technique would be great for a raindrop stencil. That would be lovely, yes. wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Um, 
We've got, um, I think I used like a snowfall embossing folder a little while ago, mm -hmm. and I embossed that um, with th that same effect. So I just had one, I think it was the midnight blue I actually used. And yes, yeah, so you just go darker at the top and you're just not adding as much ink. It, even if you're stenciling or embossing, and it, oh, yes, rainfall looks beautiful, definitely. Mm. And when, when you have done your rainfall, if you've got our sprays, you know, our um, shimmer sprays. Oh yeah. Um, popping that over the top. Oh, it looks amazing. Oh, so many yeah. things you can do. So many things. I've just had like a thousand ideas. Did you see? Did you see sort of the, it go dick, dick, ding? <laughs> 20 ideas just popped into my head. If but. you were a cartoon, it would have been all those little light bulbs, you <laughs> yes, know, filling yeah. the whole of the studio. <laughs> yeah. And that, but do you know what? That's what I love about this that you can message in. And, and you can swap and change those ideas, say I've done this, and I'm like, oh my God, yeah, that's, I love it. Mm. Um, but I forget to write them all down when you've told me, so if I don't do it straight away, it's gone. <laughs> One day it'll pop back into your head and you're like, oh, okay, that's a good idea. Yeah. Now, all the uh, ideas that you come up with, like the, the rain um, raindrop would be really good um, for um, the animal. We've missed the opportunity now, so we have a um, little situation here where we, we can sort of pitch ideas to Leanne yes. and the team, um, which was this week, and I forgot. Um, and you had and so many ideas. Loads of ideas. Never mind. I'll save them all for next year. Um, <laughs> or just filter them in bit by bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely any ideas that you've got, put them in and we'll, you know, we'll let Leanne know because she is a she is the font of all, all product knowledge, isn't she? She absolutely is. And um, I think it's I'm even I'm surprised at how far in advance um, that they do plan. So they've yeah. sort of been asking us, and I think this is for like 2024, isn't mm. it? Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. If you've got your ideas in and we've said, yeah, that's brilliant and you've not quite seen it yet, um, you know, keep waiting because yeah. it's possibly, possibly coming. Yeah, it takes a bit of time to yeah. get all these, these yes. things done, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, Anne Fleming says, I'm going to be needing tape added to my next order. Yes. Um, yeah, I think that, yeah, that, that is definitely something to pop into your basket. And do remember, um, we do have our 12 days of Craftmas um, at the moment. So every day, um, we're going to be giving you an, a new gift, a special deal. Um, they, they're only valid until um, midnight on that particular day. So tomorrow, we'll have a different one. But at the moment, it's double points on all orders. So definitely an opportunity for you to perhaps move up to the next level um, by ma maximising your points um, on your basket. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show today. I um, hope you learned something. I have uh, definitely. I'm going to be getting those stencils out as soon as I get home. Um, we're going to take a, a, a little bit of a break, uh, maybe have a cup of tea and maybe something to eat. And we'll see you all back at 6 p.m. later tonight.